Welcome to Red in Motion. Our video will look at an important paper in the American Journal of Respiratory Cell and Molecular Biology. Here, we discuss basal cell-derived Wnt7a promotes fibrogenesis at the fibrotic niche in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis by researchers from the United States of America. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, is a chronic inflammatory lung disease associated with a poor survival rate despite the use of antifibrotic treatments. It is characterized by the loss of epithelial integrity and fibroblast activation, which damages the lung tissue. Loss of type 2 alveolar epithelial cells, or AEC2s, and the prolonged accumulation of basal-like stem cells have been shown to promote fibrogenesis in IPF. However, the precise role of basal cells in the pathology of IPF is not known. To understand how basal cells participate in IPF, a team of researchers performed a series of experiments using basal cells from IPF explant and healthy donor lung tissues. First, they compared the gene expression profiles of these basal cells, where the expression of a Wnt signaling pathway ligand, Wnt7a, was found to be upregulated in IPF basal cells compared to the healthy ones. Cell co-culture assays determined that cytokines secreted by basal cells were taken up by AEC2s and fibroblasts. The basal cells were found to activate fibroblasts through Wnt7a, which, in turn, inhibited the renewal of AEC2 progenitor cells in three-dimensional organoid cultures. In mice treated with bleomycin, three doses of antibodies against Wnt7a decreased lung fibrosis and induced the recovery of AEC2 cells. Moreover, in fibroblast cultures, the Wnt inhibitor niclosamide prevented fibroblast activation, indicating that basal cell-derived Wnt7a is crucial to the fibrotic niche in IPF. Overall, these findings highlight the non-stem cell function of basal cells and basal cell-derived Wnt7a in fibroblast activation and IPF progression. This study paves the way for the identification and development of novel treatments for IPF. For more details, please read the article by Dr. Huang and colleagues. Thank you for watching Red in Motion.